You may be seated. On the screen is a summary of all the messages in the forgiveness series. The first message was from Matthew 6, the sermon, uh, or the sermon of Jesus' which taught the Lord's Prayer. Uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass or sin against us. And we learned how our forgiveness is entangled with the way in which we forgive others. And we call it one big knot. When there's a lack of forgiveness, it's like a knot in our lives. And the harder we pull on it, and sometimes the harder we try, the worse it gets. The second message was based on Luke 5. And we looked at some of the ways in which forgiveness or a lack of it can often have even physical manifestations in us. The third message was from Romans 7. And we learned that, uh, that there are powers and forces beyond us, beyond our will, and especially with forgiveness, that it may have to be a God thing, that we can't do it ourselves, that we have to rely on Him. And two weeks ago today, I preached from Matthew 18, where Jesus was asked, how often do I need to forgive? And Jesus said, 70 times 7, or forever. In other words, things that never seem to end, and we learn that we'll never outlive our need for forgiveness, either receiving it or giving it. Today's message is called The Counselor, and it's based on um, a time in Jesus' life just before he died, when according to the scriptures, he gathered his followers around him and told them that God was going to do something very special for them soon, When he physically left, he told them that he was going to send them a uh, a special Holy Spirit that would actually be his representation. In the scriptures we're about to read, if you notice carefully, Jesus says, as long as I'm here, the Holy Spirit can't come. So the Spirit is the presence of Christ in his physical absence. Whenever he is absent, the Holy Spirit is always there. We know this to be the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Some have mistakenly learned that they are listed in order of importance, or they're listed in order of time, and none of that's true, is it? They are all equally God and have been equally eternal from the beginning to everlasting, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, That gift he told them about, that presence that was coming, was very important. So he taught them many things about that Holy Spirit. In the scripture we're about to read, we will learn that this is the presence of Christ possible in our lives every day. In the scripture we're about to read, when Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit, the word is translated there, helper. He says, I'm going to send a helper. In this English Standard Version that we read from here in the sanctuary. There are other translations of the Bible that translate that word as advocate. I send an advocate for you. The word that I prefer and that I'm going to use in preaching is the translation of that word as counselor. Jesus said, I'm going to send a counselor to be with you forever. As soon as I leave This Holy Spirit, this Counselor, will be with you always. So while the translation we're reading is going to use the word helper, we can know that all three of those words are true and fair translations of what Jesus meant, don't we? It can be either helper or advocate or counselor. And so let us turn to the Word of God in John chapter 14, starting with verse 15. If you'll follow along, this is the word of God, and these are the words of Jesus Christ. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper or advocate or counselor to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you, And will be in you. Skip to verse 25 please. 
Verse 25. These things Jesus said, I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my name means his representative, doesn't it? That he has his full representation, his full authority. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. If anyone ever tells you the Holy Spirit says something different than Jesus, they're wrong, aren't they? Because the Holy Spirit only says the same thing Jesus has said. Skip now to chapter 15, John 15, verse 26. Jesus said, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. The role of the Holy Spirit is to repeat and amplify everything that Jesus Christ said, isn't it? That's what the Spirit is for. He is Christ's representative, the personal presence of Jesus Christ with us. And now turn to chapter 16, John 16, starting at verse 7. Jesus goes on about the same subject and says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. See how it can't be there if he's physically present. He has got to be absent in order for the Spirit to come, he says. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me. What's the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit? To glorify who? Christ. Jesus says, when this Spirit comes, he will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, Counselor, come and not only sit among us, but walk among us and whisper to us these words of life that come from Jesus. For we need you, we love you, and you are our only hope. We pray all of these things in the sweet name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God the Holy Spirit is the Counselor. God the Holy Spirit is the Counselor. This divine Counselor at the same time both listens and speaks. This Holy Counselor both comforts and convicts at the same time. During the days of Advent leading up to Christmas, and in the days of Christmas and after Christmas, you may remember that we read often from Isaiah who tells of a Messiah who is to come. And do you remember we call him Wonderful what? Counselor, the Mighty God. And we also use the word Emmanuel, don't we? And we know that that means God with us. Not God mailing something to us or God sending a word to us. God with us. So when Jesus came, that was God with skin on, wasn't it? God in the flesh. But a lot of times we blow right by that, that description of Isaiah, wonderful counselor. And in Deuteronomy and in Joshua and in Hebrews, the word of God says, I will never leave nor forsake you. Have you ever heard that phrase before? That's a great one to memorize, isn't it? We can share that with people who need him. We can assure them God has said I will never leave you or forsake you. The only way that is possible 
is if the Holy Spirit, the presence of Christ, is always with us, always present. Today, in the midst of this sermon series, I wanted to make sure that this week we talked about not only the Holy Spirit who is called the Counselor, but also counselors that God sends to us in the form of other people. In Jesus Christ, God showed us that there are some things that have to be done with skin on. The last service, somebody came up to me and said, were you saying, were you saying sin on? I said, no, skin. There's some things that have to be done with skin on, aren't there? So God sent Jesus Christ to do certain things in the flesh. In the same way, God sends and appoints and calls human counselors, people who can sit with us and work with us on our journey. We talk to God, but sometimes we need to counsel with a human being. We need to sit with someone who also has skin on. And we should use these human counselors to help us. When you think of who you talk to, who are other human beings, do any of you have friends that you talk to? Man, y'all straight as a stick this morning. Look at you. Just, I feel like I'm in the movie Mannequin. Do you have any friends that you... Uh, share with, talk to? How about teachers or others in helping professions? Or God forbid, a pastor. If all else fails, you know, if every other route has been exhausted, then I guess you could talk to a pastor. God works through these counselors. And especially those of us in the Protestant tradition, like to make fun of our Catholic sisters and brothers who have a sacrament called confession, don't we? And we like to make fun of them and sometimes deride them. Why, those Catholics, they go and confess to a priest. Why, I just confess to God. I talk to God about my stuff. Oh, really? I'm going to show you a scripture that's going to blow that out of the water. James chapter 5, verse 16, the Word of God says, Therefore confess your sins to who? Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So if I bonk Alan on the head and I go home into my prayer closet and pray to God for an hour or two, oh Lord, I didn't, I was awful. I should never have done that. Lord, I am sorry. And I know that your your word says that you'll forgive me if I ask for forgiveness. Lord, please forgive me for bopping Alan on the head. I should not have done that. That hurt him and it was wrong. Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you for forgiving me. And I get up and go about my merry way. What's missing there? (laughs) Yeah. I, it, it would be nice to have a conversation with Alan, wouldn't it? How about not only confessing to God, but confessing to Alan? And say, Alan, I'm sorry, and I shouldn't have done that, and I'll try not to do that again. Will you hold me accountable? Try and help me not bop you on the head again. Uh, Alan probably would say, yeah, I'll help you with that. I will definitely be helping you with that. Next time I see you even flinch, dude, I may even whip you with a cornflake. I don't know what I might do to you. But do you see the, the, the two dimensions of the cross? We talk, you know, as Protestants, oh, I don't, I don't confess to any person. I have talked to God himself. Well, that's all great and fine and good. But if you look, most of our sin doesn't just affect God, does it? Now, that I'm going to give you a minute because that requires a little thought. Most of our sin is not just against God, it affects somebody else. And so wouldn't it be good to have a conversation with the person we hurt? Therefore confess your sins to each other. He says go talk to the person or persons you have harmed. 
have a conversation with them. Having a human counselor or a therapist is not a sign of weakness. Many of us think that if we go talk to somebody that that shows we don't have our act together or we can't solve our own problems, which a lot of problems we can't solve ourselves, can we? And just having someone, even if it's not a counselor or a therapist, it's good to talk those things out. It can be a part of healing and forgiveness to have somebody else who sees it differently than we do in their set of skin. Now, for those of you who talk to your friends, do any of you have friends like this? Whatever is going on in the room, they're good with it. If you say, I love blue, they say, oh yeah, I love blue too. I'm all about blue. Well, I've loved blue a long time. In other words, yeah, blue, what, what, what those friends are, or whatever direction the wind blew, that's what they say. You know, they kind of go along with you. But do you have anybody in your life who will tell you what you don't want to hear? If not, you need to get you some of those people. Because if all you have are blue friends, whichever way the wind blew is the way they go to, you need to have somebody with enough backbone who will say to you, I think you may be wandering off the reservation there. I think you may be headed in a direction that's not good. Doesn't everybody need a couple of folks like that who will tell you? who will tell you. Every follower of Jesus Christ can use a Christian counselor or a therapist who's trustworthy and honest and has Christian integrity. In fact, did you know there's a member of our church family who is a professional counselor and therapist? Did you know there's somebody who makes his living Doing that as a member of our church family. Any of you have seen this guy? This is Dr. Al Brewster. He's a member of our church family if you don't know him. And many people know him from the work he does with veterans. But, uh, and he does great work with veterans. But Al's profession and vocation is as a Christian therapist and counselor. Uh, Al, by the way, was in the 8 o'clock service this morning. Can you imagine the joy? Isn't that your dream that the pastor will put a picture of you up on the screen, big as life? Don't you hope for that every Sunday, Annette? Don't you come to church and say, boy, I hope, hope the preacher found a picture of me on the internet that he could throw up on the screen about as big as a bread truck. <laughs> I did ask Al before I did this message if I had his blessing on what I was going to say. And I also asked him, I said, Al, do you have as many clients as you can take or is your practice closed or open? And he said uh, he would still take additional clients. And I know Al has worked, um, in my own experience, I know his work with some young men that has been very good. Uh, Al wants you to know also he's in semi-retirement. That means he's retired when he wants to be and not when he doesn't. But Al does great work. Now, there is also a Christian counseling service that we refer to, and I'll put the information on the screen for you, called the Life Christian Counseling Network. Um, Whenever we are working with members of the church, parishioners who are in need of a professional counselor, we refer to this group. They are good. I have research them and I only refer to them because they're the only firm in the area that I have confidence in to refer members of the church to them. They have offices, by the way, in Upper Marlboro, Waldorf, Clinton, several different places, Northern Virginia, throughout the Washington metro area. Um, I have spoken more than once to the head of the practice, Dr. Buckingham, and they have a large Um, stable of counselors and what they do if you call them is that they will listen to your need and try to match what you're looking for with someone who is skilled in that particular area 
So if you come to us, we can give you a referral or you don't have to have a referral from us. You can look them up on the internet. There is a phone number there and you can call them without our referral. Uh, but the reason I wanted to bring this up today is there are many of us who think that it is a sign of weakness to go talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, who's a counselor, who's a professional therapist. And while we're on this subject, I want you to know, do any of you remember a few years ago, there was a commercial where the guy said, I'm not just the owner, I'm a customer. Well, I'm just not telling you to do this, I do it too. Because I believe that any pastor of a church these days usually counsels at least dozens of people a year. And we are allowed into people's very private and personal places in their lives. And if I'm doing that work, every now and then somebody ought to be looking inside of my coconut to see what's going on. And so there is a Christian therapist that I meet with regularly and give an accounting of my life and my ministry. And I make sure he's not connected to the United Methodist Church or this church in particular. And I do make sure that I found a guy with enough backbone who every now and then will grab me by the lapels and say, what did you do that for? That was stupid. Don't do that. In love. With the love of Jesus in his heart. But you understand what I'm saying? You need to have someone who can say that to you. And so I want you to know, not only do I recommend that you do it, but I do it as well. I believe all of us, I, I have a saying now that I really believe the only people not in therapy are crazy people. If you, I've, I've said this to some folks, you care enough about yourself, you get manicures, pedicures, you get your hair done more often than it needs to be just because you want to pamper yourself. What about if you wanted to take care of your spirit and your soul? How much did you spend on the, that weekend vacation? And you're cranking at me about spending a few dollars on a therapist. Why not take care of your spirit? And this particular message fits here because often we get stuck in our lives around issues of forgiveness, of letting some things go, of forgiving others or forgiving ourselves. And sometimes God can use a human agent of the Holy Spirit to be helpful. Not a substitute for God, but as a helper of the helper. An advocate of the advocate and a counselor of the counselor. If that makes sense to you. Here again the words of Jesus Christ from John 14, 25 and 26. These things I have spoken to you, Jesus said, while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The great counselor, the human counselors that God sends to us are all God's helpers. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, if there's anyone listening to this message who has not started a relationship with Jesus Christ. Lord, let today be the day. Let today be the day that we start that walk one step at a time, one inch at a time, one moment at a time. Lord, help us if we've never started that relationship with you to say, Lord, I've made a mess of my life whenever I've tried to control it. So now, Lord, I want you to come in be my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my steps and my heart, my whole life. And let me walk following you. Be my counselor every day. And send me, Lord, to godly people who will counsel me in your ways. And help me when I get stuck. Thank you for your cross. For the counselor you sent. And for the forgiveness we still need in Jesus' name. Amen.